The Maloon Rehydration Initiative is an example of best practice in a research project that delivers landscape rehydration at the catchment scale. We understand from our research on the Maloon project that we're having beneficial impacts both on soil health, on water quality, on water quantity, but also in biodiversity across the catchment as well. These benefits are leading to resilience, helping landscapes be more resilient to drought, to bushfire and to flood, but also building the resilience of communities. When they know that they can take action in the face of these climatic extremes, that's very empowering. The work that the Maloon Institute has done has inspired landholders across New South Wales and the interest and eagerness to implement these works in their own landscapes is incredible. In the northwest of New South Wales, where our capacity building program has really taken off and we've been working with groups of landholders, not just to learn about landscape rehydration and restoring the function of their landscapes, but to implement works on their own properties and in their own catchments. The work we're doing at the property scale is really important but it's the work that we're doing at the catchment scale that is critical. Hydroterra have been a critical partner in that project. And from that partnership, inevitably discussions around how do we take this incredible approach and scale it? How do we do this across the state? And the catchment selection rehydration tool is really the outcome of those discussions and that deep partnership. The whole idea of the catchment rehydration selection tool has been to really identify a number of different spatial layers. How could they be put together and, and to uh, generate a, a map that essentially informs on uh, suitability of different areas. The selection tool is a web-based application that anyone can access from their desktop. It allows them to zoom into, for example, a two kilometre stretch of uh, stream up to a, a subcatchment. It'll inform them on how suitable those areas are for adopting rehydration practices. The output that that is map, map is showing is essentially what the suitability of that region is for adoption of the rehydration practices. For example, leaky weir installation or uh, revegetation or fencing. One of the aspects of, of this model that isn't able to be mapped spatially is a social uh, connectedness and social uh, community values. But that's one of the important parts of, of that whole process of identifying, firstly, physically and ecologically, where you can set your priorities. And then you go onto the ground and, and deal with those social aspects, which are really, really important part of um, building farming communities and cohesion and improving their resilience. So the model will help facilitate that as well. This catchment rehydration selection tool is really a decision support tool for producers and particularly sort of catchment managers to identify the regions where they should be investing. DPI's commitment to, to fund innovations and projects like this is you know, a key component of our commitment to trying to improve the resilience to climate change. As part of this sort of series of projects, there's many that we're looking at to try and improve the sustainability of agriculture and the resilience of New South Wales primary industries to climate change. I'm very excited about sort of what I've seen in terms of the, the impact rehydration work has had on properties and how a project like this can really scale that up. Recent decades has seen a significant degradation of the landscape. You've got incision of streams, you've got uh, massive erosion, you've got loss of vegetation, loss of habitat, biodiversity, and this is a really important step along the way to recovering some of that. It's one step along the way to actually achieving recovery and restoration over large scale areas, and that's really important. It's really important for uh, the, the future uh, of farming communities and food production and, and, and the environment. 
In terms of landscape rehydration, this is a critical tool in meeting the challenge of climate change. We're not just thinking about reducing carbon emissions. We're not just thinking about a net zero future. We live within the bounds of natural systems and the way we manage our landscapes, the way our ecosystems function, our soil health, these are critical factors in how we meet the challenge of climate change. And so this tool is an opportunity to focus investment and consideration around landscape rehydration and repair as a critical tool in managing the impacts of climate change. This work is an opportunity to prepare our farmers and our rural communities for climate change and it's absolutely urgent. It's urgent for the health of our landscapes and it's urgent for the health and resilience of our rural communities.